So, okay. Quick review from yesterday. The average daily balance in general, okay, is this is gonna this is gonna sound so repetitive it's the average account balance at the end of each day i'm gonna cut it there but the end of each day of your billing period so why is that important yesterday we saw that one of the ways that credit card companies can figure out your finance charge is by just taking whatever that average daily balance is and multiplying it times whatever the rate is they're charging you. And the more it goes up or down, it changes back and forth, which can be good for you if you make payments during a month. And not so good if you keep adding new purchases, which is what we're going to see today. So you're going to notice the three steps themselves are not going to change. There's just going to be one piece that gets added in. So, again, to calculate the average daily balance, this hasn't changed. When we say the sum, sum just means to add. So we're going to add our daily balances. Now, that doesn't mean... That if it's a month, that you're going to have 30 things you have to add together. We chunk them according to what your balance is. And most people don't pay on their credit card every single day. Or even make charges every single day. So it can adjust a little bit, but it won't be that bad. And we're going to divide it by the number of days. Same thing that we saw yesterday. Nothing different at all. So actually, let's do this. Instead of just screaming through these and not having any context to them, let's grab this first one down here and actually do a little bit of work on it. So to get that average daily balance, we're going to need to take these end-of-day balances and how many days we were on each of them. So I'm hoping, yeah, that's going to show up. Okay. Straight from here, you don't have to do anything fancy. <coughs> Whoops, except I do not I do not want to divide. And we're literally just going to work our way down here. Just multiplying the values. Oh dear. Hi, Mr. Hi. Mason Williams, the student service of Tilly, please. Okie dokie. Thank you. Oh dear, I went way out there that time. So while you're kind of jotting that down, a couple of things to make note of. One of them is notice here. Even though we're doing this daily balances, there were only five times that we actually had to make the calculation. Why? Because this particular person, Emmy, had a balance at the start of the month of $518 on her card. Then she paid $100, which means now it's at $418. So now the interest she's going to be charged is less because of that payment for the number of days it stays there. Then she bought a little more, so now it went back up. And so the interest is going to go up with it. This is more This is more the norm in what we see in credit cards. The other two that we did, not quite as often do we see that happening. And so if you ever are curious on where the heck do they come up with these numbers that they send me every month, if you have a credit card. But all we're doing for our purposes is multiplying those together. And then we're going to add up the totals. Let me get that out of the way. So once you have that sum, all we've got to do then
is take that sum and divide it by the number of days. <laughs> So that would be my average daily balance that I'm going to use when I'm calculating my finance charge to see what my actual balance will be. But that's all there is to it. Multiplying and adding. Can't be much more straightforward than that. So once we know that value, okay, then to calculate the finance charge, It's going to be our average daily balance, so the answer we got in step one, times the periodic rate, which, as we mentioned yesterday, basically is just, hey, here's the annual rate that they'll put, like when you're filling out a credit card form, you divide it by 12, basically. And you'll know what the periodic rate's going to be, but just make sure it's a decimal. So we'll get to calculating some of those down below with the examples as well. And then finally, the new balance is the unpaid balance. So how much you started with at the beginning of the month. So like in Emmy's case, that would be the 518 here. plus the finance charge, okay, which is step number two that we did, plus any purchases that were made. So you like that? I mean, that seems pretty reasonable. Pay balances, the finance charge, any purchases, and we keep going. Because the purchases I make during the month Yes, they get it added on, but as far as the finance charge goes, those also come into play. So let's do this. Let's go to the one where we get to do all the things instead of just staying in one part here. So if we come down here to the bottom, same type of stuff except, okay, finance charge added to Robin's account because he didn't pay the last bill in full. So again, Computed using average daily balance with new purchases. All the info is here. You're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of different things. Yeah, he made payments, he made purchases, he did all sorts of things. Which is kind of strange why you'd make a purchase and then turn around and make a payment. But hey, it is what it is. So I will try to get you these numbers as quickly as we can. But you also may be well served to punch them in yourself on the calculator. Again, straight up multiplying and adding here times one I think I can handle in my head. Last one's going to be a biggie. You can see why so many of the credit card companies would be, oops, let me move that back down, would be so interested in making sure that they get all their money because there's a lot of money flowing through here. There's a reason why all these banks and credit card companies have all these really big, nice buildings. Because when you're the one with the money and everybody else is needing it, $16,344.59. And I'll mention this again while we're probably writing some things down. It doesn't mean that Robin charged 
$16,000 worth of stuff this month. Okay, it just means that as we're working along here, that's the running daily if I added up all the end of day balances for the month. So we would take that number, 16, 3, 40, 4, 59, and divide by the number of days. So 527, 24 is my average daily balance. So that was done exactly the same as we did Emmys right above here. But now we actually get to do the rest. So I pull this back into play and I go, okay, the finance charge is 7.25%, but again, remember, we're dividing that by 100 because we need the decimal version of it. So I take my average daily balance and multiply by the rate. So about $38.22 would be my finance charge. And here is the last part where we have to watch it a little bit. So to get the new balance that's gonna show up on my next statement, we're gonna put a few things together here. We're gonna have our unpaid balance, okay? And we're gonna start back from the beginning here. So the unpaid balance of 590.19 Minus, do I want a minus first? No, we need to put the finance charges first. So plus my finance charge. The one thing that we didn't mention as we were getting in here before, because we talked about the unpaid balance, the finance charge, and the new purchases. We did make payments. We made two of them for $135. So... We get to take those off. It's one of the few things we get to do minus for and not keep adding, which is nice. But then since we went ahead and still made another purchase, we've got to add that back in. So 590.19 and the finance charge minus how much money we paid plus how much money we put back in. And so here's, here's what I'd ask you to kind of notice here. So Robin started the month at 590, ended the month at 545, okay? But here's the thing, Robin already paid 135 and still this is only down like 45 bucks. This is how people get themselves in trouble. It's this vicious circle and they never get away from paying, 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 paying all the time. They just keep doing it on everything. And so, got to be a little bit careful of that. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to chat this kind of like we did the other day. I'm not going to break you down with all these stuff. Here's what I would like you to do. To be honest, I just want you doing these last couple. Okay, because you're going to get to do everything that way. You're going to find the average daily balance you're going to get to do the finance charge. You're going to get to find the new balance that way. So over on page 10, it's just the last two that you're going to need to do for practice. Okay, so nothing too bad. We're trying to, excuse me, trying to make this a little more reasonable as we go. But the second part to it, because I mean two problems, that'd be, that'd be a little too short on things. What you picked up when you came in from the back, okay, was this credit card project thing. So since most of the time, I'll be honest, a lot of the credit card companies, they still send out some mailers, but they would much rather spam your email and text you on the phone rather than do that. So I did not have enough mailers that I've been gotten from places to have all of those come in. 
But here's, here's what we're going to do, and I'm going to do the first one with you. So we're going to find some credit card offers. Like, okay, how do I do this? Like, I don't know what these credit card companies are doing. So the easiest thing to do is literally to Google credit card offers. So actually, I'm going to do that again. I want you to see something that was popping up, and I hit it too quick. So check this out. I just Google in credit card offers, balance transfer. So if I have a big credit bill racked up somewhere, sometimes people say, hey, we won't charge you interest for six months. Move it here. Cashback bonus. You probably see commercials for like Discover and some of these things. Like 1.5% cashback every dollar. But you're still spending 90, the other 98.5%. So it's not really that great. And credit card offers for bad credit. Let's say you didn't pay back some of your stuff and things, but you're for some reason thinking you still need to spend more money. You can find credit card companies that'll still give you more credit, even though you haven't paid the other stuff. So just wanted to put that out there before we actually get into this here. So again, you have lots of places. And the funny thing about all of this is, I'm scrolling down here, how many, it takes me till I get down to here before I finally start getting to the actual credit card companies. This is frightening. The first, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. The first eight ads on Google aren't even from credit card companies. People actually make a living from looking at the credit card company offers and then just popping them up on their website. I mean, this best offers from our partners. The credit card companies are hiring agencies to try and suck you in to what's going on. So, I don't care what offer we do. Let's see here. What do we want to do? Ooh. Give me miles, give me points, give me cash back matches. Heck, a couple of you, give me a couple hundred bucks here. Woo. Let's, I don't know, which one should we do? Like, uh, that all sound awful. Let's, well, let's just do the first one. Okay, I'm hoping they're going to let me get some information here. And hope I don't get blocked. Okay. So I look. So we're going to do a little back and forth action here. Okay. So stick with me. I'll try not to drive you too crazy. Oh, let's try something. No. Come back here. Can I pull this off? Come on. Oh. Can I shrink this? Oh. Maybe. We're going to make this work. Okay. So, offer number one, name a card. Well, there it is right there. So, Wells Fargo. So, if you're like, Hardy, why am I doing this? It's going to be like at least three years before I can get a card. I get that. But I'm telling you, the minute you turn 18, you are going to have places on you like crazy. It's not quite as bad as it used to be. It used to be that these credit card companies could even go on to a campus, like let's say Rock Valley, NIU, something like that, and literally have little tables there set up trying to get you to sign up for a card. It's like, hey, we'll give you a t-shirt. Hey, we'll give you a pizza. And then you sign off, and before you know it, you bought a bunch of electronic equipment, you're $1,000 in debt. What expensive pizza. So instead, now they've been banned off of college campuses, one of the smart things that somebody's done somewhere. And so I start to look, and I'm like, okay, this Wells Fargo cash card, zero annual fee. You're like, wait, some of these credit card companies literally are going to charge me money just to have the card. Yes. They're going to tell you that their extra rewards are so great, that's worth it. Um, we'll try and find one of those in a minute, because that gets kind of interesting. So now, rewards rate, if they have one. 
limited 2% cash rewards on your purchases. So the whopping 2% we're going to get back on anything we buy. Sometimes we'll have an intro offer, not every time, they do here. So here we get $200 when we spend 500. Actually, as far as credit cards go, that's not terrible. That's actually one of the better percentages I've seen with some of these. So now, here comes the rest of it that we haven't quite seen yet. So the rest gets a little more interesting. We may have to dig for some of this other stuff. Oh, there's one thing we get to dig for. So let's see. Annual percentage rate for purchases. You're like, wait a minute. So why are there all those different numbers there? Like, why isn't there just one number? So here's how that works. And we're going to write all three of them. Yes, it's zero. For the first 15 months. So that's nice. I, I buy stuff. They're not going to charge me interest. That's cool. As long as I'm paying monthly. They don't mention that. Once that ends. Okay. Let me write these numbers. And then we will explain why there are three different ones. Okay. Those three rates represent, they're going to break people, and they're not going to tell you how, into three categories. People that are paying their stuff back on time, paying it monthly, and then have high credit scores, are going to get the lower rates. If you miss payments, or you keep rolling over your balance from month to month, the further that happens, the higher the rate is going to go. So like, if you miss a payment during the 15 months, I'll guarantee you're going to make the 29.99. But again, we would divide that by 12 for our monthly from the ones that we're doing. So that's an interesting thing to take note of. Okay. Balance transfers. Now let's see. Balance transfers made in the 100 will qualify for the intro rate. Okay. So here. Same as purchases. So if you had a really large credit card bill somewhere and you had a chance to transfer it over to this Wells Fargo card, at least you wouldn't be paying interest on it while you're trying to pay it off. I know a lot of people in the classes that I've taught before that they do this constantly. They've got a $2,000 balance. Okay, I'll move it over here for 15 months. Well, now I got it down to 1,000. Where's the next credit card? So I can move it there for 10 months. So the idea is we get to zero, so we don't have to keep doing that, but that's kind of what we're looking for here. Let's see, cash it. Yes, sir. So what's the interest, like, what, what, what do the credit cards get out of that? Like, the company, why would they want to give you this? Why are they doing the 0%? Yeah, like, Okay, because what their theory is, what they found over time is, if you transfer a balance over, if you're having such a hard time paying off your bill that you can move it, what they're hoping is, at the end of the 15 months, you don't have another option to move. You're probably going to have a balance still, and now I'm going to start getting my 30% out of you. So it's, it's a calculated risk that they're taking over time, knowing that the odds are in their favor. Yeah, it's, it's that hook to try and suck you in. Like those students going to class, they're just like, oh, I'll give you candy if you're finishing things. They're like, ooh, I'll do it. That's the same idea with a credit card. This is the candy they're offering, 0%. So yeah, it's it, it. A lot of this is to get you in the door. So let's see if we can get the other info up front here. Ooh, look at we got nice stuff. Do they want us to know nice other stuff? No, not yet. Okay. Cell phone protection, even people. I've seen how some of you act with your cell phones. That might be a thing worth worth looking into. So you're still sitting here and you're going, okay. They give us all this fancy stuff. So notice. Notice so far as I go really fast through here, have we seen, uh, let's go into the fine print. Notice we haven't seen a minimum interest charge. We haven't seen fees for all the other things. 
normally that stuff is going to be in the fine print. Let's keep going. Cell phone protection. You're like, holy cow, we're going deep. Oh, we're, this is normal. I've literally had entire hour classes where we've just gone through these with people going, look at what's in here. And they're like, oh, that's kind of, uh, not yet. No, you have to put it in here, people. If they didn't, it's illegal. So that's why I'm looking to see. Yeah, so you even can notice with me knowing what I'm looking for. Am I actually going to have to go into the form to see it? Sir. Yeah. If they have it on the page. But that's true. That's true. Oh, it did on the last page? Dang it. Okay, hang on. Let me go back. Was it down further? I got too far going ahead. I like that. Okay. Hang on. We go back one page. So when we were back here, oh, you're going to be, I'm going to be like, dang. So this is what I love with you guys. This is like, oh yeah, there it is right there. Credit score. Okay, let's do this. 690 to 850, which like it says on here is good to excellent. We haven't talked about credit scores a lot yet, but 850 is as good as it gets. That is the I love debt king or queen. Okay? So, yes, that is definitely something to take a peek at here. Ooh, rates and fees. Oh, I should have just stayed on this page the whole time. No, I should have taken me back to the same page again, and I'm going to be like, really? Oh, good. All right. Let's see. Balance transfers, ooh. APR for cash advances. Okay, let me move down a little bit here. Oofta, they ain't giving you that free for a while. You're like, okay, so what is, what's that? You can, in an emergency, hopefully, you can use your credit card like you would a debit card. Like if you go and the debit card says you want cash back, you're like, yeah, and it does that. You can do that with a credit card but at a 30% interest rate. So, I mean, if you're in a really bad spot, I'm trying to figure out why you would... Maybe if you may have to make like a car payment or something, which you can't use a credit card for, you might do that. But oof duh, that would be, that would be painful. Um, minimum interest charge. Man, I'm glad you found me this page. It's just that fees. Minimum interest charge is a dollar. Okay, that's, no, that wouldn't be terrible. Let's see what else we got. Fees, oh, fees, here we come. Balance transfer fee, okay. So it's $5 or 3% of the balance. For most people, that would be 3% of the balance. So you're like, okay, so what does that mean? If I bet, transferred a hundred dollars over, I'd owe them. Well, it's, that'd be less. A thousand dollars and moved it over. That'd be thirty dollars that I'd have to pay to move that over. So they're telling you they're not charging you interest, but they really are. Uh, let's see, cash advances. See how we keep getting nickel and dimed here. Ten dollars or five percent, whichever is greater. So if I borrow a thousand bucks, it's going to be. 50 bucks to borrow the thousand. Um, late payment fee. I like the way they put this. Up to $40. They don't really explain what would make the difference on if it's 40, if it's not 40. 
something like that. But do notice, how do we calculate your balance? We use a method called what? Average daily balance, including new purchases, what we were just doing. Most credit card companies are going to be doing that. Um, so this is average daily balance. And I believe when we were on the last page, it did the pros and cons here for us. So high rewards rate, no annual fee, and intro 0%. That's actually pretty solid. Normally, if you're going to get something back right away, you don't get the APR with it. So, yeah, for a credit card, it's good. It's still not good, but it's, it's better. It's better. Cons. Uh, their con isn't really a big, huge con to me, but okay. No bonus categories. You're like, okay, what does that mean? There's some credit cards that, like, you get 5% back if you do it at a restaurant, or 5% at the grocery store, 5% of its electronics, and they rotate those categories. Um, so that can be helpful if you do one of those things a lot. It can, it can save you a little bit of money there. And the return payment fee, how have we not seen that yet? Or is it just Hardy being blind? That's always an absolute possibility. Late payment? No. Returned payment. Y'all think my payment's going to be successful, do you? Holy moly. Come on. If it doesn't work, I got one other way I can do this. Overdraft protection. No, I don't want to do overdraft protection. What happens if I do overdraft? Okay, watch this move. Wells Fargo credit card. Oops. Return payment fee. There it is. $35. So the main focus behind this is, is twofold. When you're doing these, it's letting you start to see how much and how often every single thing with a credit card that you look at here, dollars out of my pocket, dollars out of my pocket, percentages out of my pocket. The idea here is, yes, it's, it's nice to have that for certain things. But for the most part, all this is going to do is take money out of your pocket and let you have less for something else. That you so at some point here, some point in the next week-ish somewhere, play around with a couple of more just to kind of see, hey, do they have any annual fee? Hey, and see how they're different in how they build and try to make themselves unique in the way that they do things.